Welcome. Thank you for joining us today for another video. Today, we will be investigating a disappearance that has ties to one of the most powerful and secretive institutions in the world, the Vatican. The mystery that surrounds the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi has all the key pieces that any Hollywood director would love when making a movie. This case has countless twists and turns and at times seems to point directly at a papal office cover-up. Today, we will examine the different developments in Emanuela's case and what conclusions we might can draw. Let's get into it. Behind the walls of the Vatican Embassy, an old mystery brought back to life. Workers found human bone fragments while renovating a building. The Italian media can't stop asking, is it Emanuela Orlandi? The daughter of a Vatican employee disappeared 35 years ago when she was 15. Sono convinto. Orlandi's brother believes she's still alive and that the Vatican has answers. The Vatican has always denied involvement. As for the bones, police forensic experts are trying to determine the age, sex, and date of death. That could take at least a week. Emanuela Orlandi was born on January 14, 1968. She was the fourth of a total of five children. Her parents, Erkel and Maria Orlandi, were one of the few people to ever call the independent country of the Vatican City home. Emanuela's father was employed by the Vatican City. Most accounts state that he was an employee of the Vatican Bank, which will play a major role in this story, but a few reports state that he was actually an employee of the papal household. Either way, her father had deep connections with the Vatican and therefore understood the politics that came with being a citizen of the Vatican City. When speaking of their upbringing within the walls of the Vatican, the Orlandi children remember a time when the Vatican Gardens were their playground. Emanuela enjoyed playing the flute, so she continued taking music lessons three times a week after her school term ended. She attended Tommaso Ludovico da Vittoria School, which is connected with the Pontifical Institute of Sacred Music. On Wednesday, June 22, 1983, Emanuela was running late for her flute lesson. This is when she asked her brother Pietro if he would take the mile-long bus ride with her from the family apartment in the Vatican City to her music lesson in Rome. Her brother had previous plans scheduled that day and told Emanuela that he could not ride with her on the bus. His refusal to ride with her that afternoon caused a fight between the two, the type of argument that so often breaks out between two siblings. The disagreement has weighed heavily on Pietro ever since that day, with years later him saying, I've gone over it so many times, telling myself, if only I had accompanied her, maybe it wouldn't have happened. The it that her brother is referring to in the previous quote is the tragic vanishing of his sister that has had all the hallmarks of a big screen mystery. The Orlandi family did receive one last communication from their beloved daughter and sister. Emanuela placed a phone call to her sister at home after she had taken her bus ride to her flute lesson. In this phone conversation, she told her sister that she was late to her music lesson because someone from the multi-level marketing business Avon had offered her a job. She went on to tell one of her friends at the music school about this supposed job as well. Several of Emanuela's friends have said that they saw her speaking with someone near the bus stop before the music lesson. After the flute lesson, she went to the bus stop with a couple of her friends. One of those friends left shortly thereafter, leaving Emanuela standing at the stop with another friend. At this point, the witnesses say they saw her get into a dark colored, possibly green, BMW that then drove away. The real mystery of her disappearance has played out over the days, months, and years after. There are many theories and straight up accusations involving this mystery. The most alarming being the claims that American Archbishop and former president of the Vatican Bank 
Paul Marcinkus ordered that Emanuela be taken. First inclination is to think that this accusation makes little sense for an archbishop in the Vatican to have a mob mentality. Unfortunately, it was an open secret that the archbishop had direct ties to the mafia in Italy. He is suspected of many crimes, including involvement in the death of Pope John Paul I. He was never convicted of any crimes, but he did step down from his role of Vatican bank head when his shady financial dealings with the mafia became evident. Since his death in 2006, several people, including journalists and people with direct open ties to the Mafia, have come forward claiming that Marcinkus ordered that Orlando be taken that day. The next biggest theory is that a group that was believed to be behind the assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II had taken Emanuela. Several phone calls were claimed to have come from the group demanding that Mehmet Ali Adka be released from prison in exchange for Orlando to be returned safely. Mehmet was the man who shot the Pope in May of 1981. The family received phone calls on different occasions claiming that Orlandi was out in the public living her life under a new identity. The first of these callers was a 16-year-old male who claimed that he and his fiancée had spoken with Emanuela, but that she had called herself Barbara and was selling Avon products. He said that the girl had told them that she had run away from home. A couple of days later, a man calling himself Mario phoned the family. He told the parents that he owned a bar near the Vatican City and that a girl calling herself Barbara had been in his bar recently. He said that she told him that she had run away from home recently, but that she would return home for her sister's wedding. Another theory was brought forth by controversial Catholic priest and exorcist Gabriel Amar. He claimed that this was part of a sick ring of men who used young females for their disgusting carnal desires. On June 30th of 1983, the family of Emanuela Orlandi and their supporters came as the city of Rome with over 3,000 posters that had her photo on them. A few days later, Pope John Paul II would make the first of several open pleas to the public regarding the disappearance of Emanuela. No viable leads materialized from his declarations. Although some of the Orlandi family and many in public believe the Vatican officials and possibly the Pope himself know the exact information that would solve this decades-long mystery. 36 years after the teenager went missing, her brother Pietro said, I don't know about the theories, but I do say this. The behavior of the Vatican over these 36 years has been one of secrecy and lack of collaboration, and it has made me think there are leaders within the Vatican who know what happened. The implication of Pietro's statements are frightening, and with the corruption that has come to light in the last 15 years regarding the Catholic Church, his words do carry some weight. If the leaders at the Vatican know what happened and have done nothing about it over the years, then in my opinion, their lack of action borders on demonic. However, when analyzing any of these accusations, it is important to remember that men will do bad things but this does not necessarily mean that the institutions they are associated with are as guilty as well. The Orlandi family thought that they had caught a break in the case when they began receiving information from sources inside the Vatican that they may know where Emanuela is buried. As saddening as the news was for them, they were eager to hopefully find closure in the mystery surrounding their sister's disappearance. The family was told to look in the Teutonic Cemetery inside the Vatican. The tipster said, go to where the angel is pointing. This information led them to the graves of two princesses that had been buried there in 1836 and 1840, respectively. However, the mystery of Orlandi was not solved. If anything, it became bigger. When the excavators dug the graves, there was no bodies there, not even the princesses. No one knows where their bodies are. Another strange thing that happened was that an entrance to a mass burial chamber was found, which contained thousands of human bones. The Vatican has refused to do in-depth analysis to find out if Emanuela Orlandi's remains were a part of those bones discovered. The mystery of what happened to Emanuela is both sad and tragic. We may never find out what truly happened to her. The only thing that we can hope for is the truth to be exposed and the Orlandi family to be given some form of closure. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. Your encouragement and support mean more than you know. Please like, subscribe, share, and post a comment. 
Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll never miss any content. Until the next one.